good morning, good morning, prayer warriors from the north, the south, the east, and the west. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come in on fire. Bring joy in the room. Bring peace in the room. Come on, bring understanding in the room. Bring love in the room. Bring faith in the prayer room this morning. Bring it in here. You got something to offer to the prayer circle. Bring it in here. Come on. You got a testimony. You got faith that you can bring to the prayer room. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You got something to bring to the table. Good morning, prayer warriors from the north, south, east, and the west. Good morning. When you come in, say something good. Come on, put something good in the comment comments and uh, let us know that you are here. Let us know where you represent it from. I see New Jersey is already here. Good morning, Devon. Good morning. Good morning, T Tanja. Uh, good morning. Uh, Lash oh, Lord, you know I need to leave these names alone. Lashari <laughs> Clay. <laughs> good morning. Happy Friday. It's day 12 of seeking God for 21 days and it's going fast. Somebody put in the comments, it is moving fast. Before you know it, uh, the 21 days will be over. So get in here. You have approximately, what, uh, nine more days, I believe. Nine more days, nine more days. And, and it's not too late to get in here now. While the saints are coming in slow, it's 6.03, it's early. I can play a few songs that speaks to where we are and what uh, God is saying and, and how I feel in the spirit today. Glory to God. This is how I feel today. I love him like I do. That's how I, on this Friday. Anybody love him like you do? Come on, get in here. Good morning. From myself when no one else was around. And it was only by his grace. And mercy is favor. Cause I know I don't deserve all the love he showed. Get in here, prayer warriors. That's why I love him. Y'all don't know this one. You should, but shame if you don't know it. <laughs> Good morning. Come on. That's why I love him like I do, yeah. Love him like I do, yeah. Love him like I do. Come on. Good morning, Maury. I know you're getting up dancing. Get up, get up, get up. Wake up. When I need it. The enemy said I was through. He took me from the bottom and put me on the top. He laid his hands on me. Woo! He laid his hands on you. That's what I'm talking about, Jamaica. We love the Lord with all of our hearts, all of our minds, all of our souls. Oh yeah, it's Friday in the presence of the Lord. It is Friday. Somebody told me that we overcome by your testimony. But you wouldn't believe on that would be you to paralyze me. But God led me through the test. Brought out the very best of me and now. I'll never forget. To tell the world. Woo. I don't see y'all saying nothing. You say you love him, Sherry. That's what I'm talking about. You love him. Glory. One more song, I promise. We're flowing this morning, 6 a.m. prayer. Y'all know how I am. 
I don't believe in no dry worship. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Glory. Come into his courts with the praise. One more song to wake you up. One more, one more that's going to wake you up. Everybody say he's a great God. If you know he's a great God in New York, if you know he's a great God in Detroit, if you know he's a great God in Texas, if you know he's a great God in New Jersey, in Seattle, wherever you are, Chicago, come on, declare it in your atmosphere. He's a great God. Let the world know. Let your family know. Let the day know this day that he's a great God. Woo! Declare it early in the morning. Uh oh, I feel something. Every time I play this song, that power start coming in. Woo! All through the day and through the night. I'm grateful. I'm not afraid of the arrows by day. Or the terrors that may come through the night. That's Psalms 91. But we all can say. If you're at home in the bed, get up. Walk through the house. Say it. Say the words. Say it. He's a great God. Father, you're a great God. Woo. I'm feeling now. <laughs> Woo, Shama. Glory. Get that oil. Hama. Glorious. Glory to God. There are angels standing watch over our lives. And I'm grateful. So I'm not afraid. Glory to God. We all can say He's a great God. Come on. A great God. Glory to your mighty name. We exalt your name on high. We magnify you. We glorify you. We exalt you. We lift you up. We thank you for another morning to praise you. Another day to declare your goodness. I thank you today. I praise you today. Magnify you. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Jesus. Glorious God. Wonderful God. Come on. I don't see y'all put no praise in those comments. Light it up in there. Come on. I feel something. Glory to God. Come on, church. Glory. Nobody like you, God. Nobody. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God, for giving us clarity and knowing what to pray for. Got it. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Woo! I feel it. Everybody. It's Friday, and it's a special anointing that's flowing wherever you will praise him. Wherever the people won't just look, but when the people will get in the prayer circle, those that are in it now, those that are praying fervently, those that got to praise with power. God, I thank you for your glory. It's reaching people. Glory to God. Right where they are, I thank you for there's glory coming in. There is power coming in. Your weight of glory, the goodness of your glory is coming in every prayer room today as we declare your greatness. I got a word for somebody. I got it. I got it. God showed me how last night 
somebody that's here, you're right now, you were dealing with warfare and it comes through the spirit of fear. There is a spirit of terror or a spirit of fear. It's amazing how when the lyrics were saying, I will not be afraid for the arrows by day or the terror by night. That Psalms 91, today the Lord revealed to me while we were worshiping, that's why I got caught up there, glory to God, that God told me to tell you that your warfare is over when it comes to dealing with fear. The spirit of fear comes over you, not only at night, but it comes over you when it's time to do something for God. I got it clear, Holy Ghost, thank you. Thank you. Whenever it's time for you to do something for God or when it's time for you to take the lead or take the go to the forefront, there is a spirit of fear that comes over you. It is a demonic spirit that have been sent to stop you. And the same spirit, help me Holy Ghost, glory to God, has been plaguing not just you but your family. That thing has been passed down to you. You are dealing with a generational spirit that's gained access to your family. But God says today as we were worshiping God in the spirit, the spirit of Fear has now left. If now you have been delivered and set free, God says, you got to get up in boldness. Get up in authority. Glory to God. The warfare is over. Who is that that the Holy Ghost is talking to? Glory to God. God said you will never deal with it again because God has not given you the spirit of fear. God has given you love, power, and a sound mind. And I even sense, glory to God, where you've uh, uh, reasoned with yourself and kind of brushed it over. What am I seeing? You're laughing it off. God says, no, it's a spirit. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. <laughs> glory. I can't help but to say what I see in the spirit. Glory to God. That spirit of fear has been assigned to anointed people. Glory to God. People that are anointed by God. The gifts of God cannot flow through fear. Glory to God. When fear comes in, it stops the flow. It jams up the flow. It stops the move of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When faith comes in, it flows. Your gift flows. Your anointing flows. Everything that God uh, is doing through you, it flows. When the faith is in action, I thank you, Lord God, this morning as you revealed it to me in prayer this morning. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I thank you, Lord God, for we're activating a new dimension of faith today. We are tapping into the next realm of faith. I feel it now. There it is. I feel it for somebody. I feel it for me. There's a new realm of faith. Glory to God. He said, I'll take you from glory to glory, faith to faith. I will reveal to you different realms and portals. I cannot show you the deep things when you're operating in fear. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God says, I cannot reveal to you the deeper things if you are afraid. Because when you tap into the spiritual realm, there are things that God, uh, that will blow your mind. Glory to God. <laughs> There's some things in the heavenlies, in the spiritual realm, that will blow your natural mind. So God can only distribute to you what you can handle according to your faith. It's going deep. I didn't even know that we were going there. But I feel such a fervent, I feel fire. The effectual fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. Who am I talking to? I got my eyes open now. Who is that? Glory to God. God, glory to God. God said that I can only distribute to you. You're saying, God, I want more. I want to see more. What, the first thing you pray for today is God unlock a new dimension of faith in my mind and in my heart and within my spirit let faith come alive in me let faith come alive around me let it be faith around me in me and through me god says when you pray that i will unlock faith then i can show you 
deeper. I can take you deeper. I can show you how your gift functions. I can show you how to see deeper. Glory to God. You're trying to see without the faith that can accommodate with that realm. You're trying to see without the faith that you need to accommodate that realm that you're trying to see in. But God says today, I am opening eyes in the circle. In the prayer circle. Glory to God. I am opening eyes. I am opening eyes. I am unstopping ears. I will make it clear. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I am opening eyes. Every deaf and dumb spirit, every blind spirit that causes us to be limited in our view or our vision. I thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You are causing us to see deeper. Woo! Come on. Now get some faith right now. Open up your eyes. Glory. Sura bandele bado shahanda la bahra kapandele atoshahaya. Open up your eyes by faith. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Open up your eyes. God has clearing, he's clearing up the clouds. He's clearing up the confusion. Faith is causing you to see deeper and to see sharper. Now God begins to reveal to me now how the circle or your surroundings or your prayer circle will be vital in the months to come. Thank you, Holy Ghost. That is why the Holy Ghost would not allow me to shift and pray about other things. Because there's a lot to pray about. There's chaos everywhere. There's so many things going on. There's so much to pray about. But God knows better than we know. And when we pray by his spirit, we are hitting the target when we don't realize it. Thank you. Shama, glory to God. Hallelujah. So God keeps his people focused on what is necessary. Because we could be praying all over the place. And we pray amiss, Deshaun. We don't want to miss what God wants us to pray for. I see somebody aggravated say he should be praying about this, praying about that. You pray what God told you to pray for. That's why you're in the circle. You get out what God showed you. And we're doing this together. While I'm praying what God reveals to me, you pray what God reveals to you. And we are united and we're getting the job done. But today, thank you, Holy Ghost. We pray by the spirit, in the spirit. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. God reveals it to me clearly that it is necessary, Dietrich, for you to stay. Tell the people not to break the circle. For I'm anointed today to tell everybody that will watch this. Do not break your prayer circle. In the summer. In the fall, in the days to come, the Spirit of the Lord takes me to the future. See, they don't even know how important it is for you to lock arms. Lock arms. Get a grip on your circle. He said, whether two or three are gathered together, I will be there. We need to know that we can produce the presence of God when the circle a prayer is united. God, his presence will always show up in the midst 
of the prayer circle. So even when the prayer circle is under fire, I need y'all to hear me today. Y'all, Are y'all zooming in because I'm up somewhere here and I'm trying to get it. Glory to God. God told me that the prayer circle, glory to God, is vital. Glory to God. It is important. It is of urgency for you to get your prayer circle started now. Because there will be a season where the prayer circle will be under fire. Glory to God. Under attack. Glory to God. But the circle will be unbreakable if you start it now. There is an urgency in the spirit now. And the Holy Spirit takes me to uh, the Old Testament in the scripture and shows me the three Hebrew boys who formed a prayer team takes me. I also see Daniel in that prayer circle. Come on, get up there with me. I see anoint four anointed, powerful believers, unshakable, unmovable, unwavering men of God who against the system, against the demonic plots of the enemy, they form a prayer team. Glory to God. But the enemy got upset about the prayer circle. So he attacks the circle. And he tells uh, uh, everybody, if you're praying to another God other than me, you're going to be put in some fire. And so now you see the prayer team under fire spiritually. You, you got to expect warfare when you're doing the will of God. There are two things that you can always expect when you are doing God's will and you form a circle. You can expect a move of God like never before. You can expect miracles, signs, and wonders. You can expect angelic assistance. You can expect divine protection. Many things from God you can expect to happen and it will happen. So don't get all surprised when it happens. When the surprise check get in the mail. Glory to God. When the money show up out of nowhere. It happens in the prayer circle. You, you hear me? When you have a prayer unit. When God heals your body. Don't be surprised. When things clear up, glory to God, things that are going on in you, when things clear up, don't be surprised when it happens because it goodness of God comes in the prayer circle. So you can expect angelic activity when you're in the circle, but you can also expect demonic activity. Hear me, hear me. Listen, you can also expect the devil to be mad that people are praying somewhere. The devil is mad when you pray. So when you expect it, when you're ahead of it, you know what it is when it shows up. <laughs> Glory to God. This week I had a little warfare and every time I take a look at it and see what's going on with the situation, I say, I know what it is. Glory to God. I'm in the middle, glory to God, of a prayer team, a prayer circle, 21 days of seeking God. And you expect the devil to lay down and just let you get, just do it with no problems. He's going to try to send imps and demons to frustrate your purpose. It's going to stir up in people. It will stir up in loved ones. It will stir up in church members. It will stir up there where things should be going smooth, where you don't understand why it's going on. You better understand it. I can tell you. Don't say, I don't know what's going on. I'm telling you. What I'm telling you is, if you've been in the prayer circle for the last 12 days, glory to God, there is a devil that don't like it. There was a devil that's trying to distract you from your focus, from getting your miracle. There's always a demon or a devil that will stir up somewhere. Glory to God. If he can't get to you directly to your mind, he will come through somebody else's mind to do something crazy that will stir you up. 
Glory to God. Help me, Holy Ghost, up in here. <laughs> Glory to God. That devil will try to stir you and get you to cussing and fussing and getting angry when you've been in God's presence. Don't tell me it won't happen. You are human. Even though you are anointed, you are still wrapped up in this flesh. This flesh gives you away every time. Glory to God. I'm not deceived that we are praying by the spirit, but we are in the flesh. So at times, even anointed people, your flesh stirs up. <laughs> Glory to God. And there's always a devil trying to poke at that your flesh man or your natural man or stir up your old man. There's always a demon trying to poke at you. Glory to God. So when I looked at the situation, I said, what is this? It's unnecessary. I was telling my wife, why are we dealing with this? Everything is smooth going on. And why is that person just stirring up so foolishness for no reason? Everything is fine. What is my, uh, uh, and then the Holy Ghost said, you know what it is. <laughs> You already know what it is, bro. Stop tripping. Stop acting like you don't know spiritual things. Stop acting like you ain't never seen it before. I'm 50 years old. You know how many times I've seen that spirit? It's the same spirit. It's the same spirit. The devil ain't doing nothing new. He got a old, the old ancient same tricks. Glory to God. It shows up. And when you see it, you know what it is. When you experience it, you know what it is. Glory to God. So the soul, you need to understand that there will be demonic activity, but there will be angelic activity. There will be something good stirring. There will be something glorious stirring, but there will be something wicked stirring at the same time to move you out of uh, the prayer circle. But in the name of Jesus. Come on, get that oil. Get that oil. We got it. We're on target on this. Listen, we are on target today. I don't know about yesterday. or well, we've been on target every day. But I'm telling you, today, right now, in this moment, the Holy Ghost is clear. Got us in his hands like a weapon. And we are articulating the clear, sure word of the Lord. Glory to God. So the prayer team, the prayer, prayer team will be under fire. The prayer circle will be under fire. Glory to God because the enemy doesn't like it. So now God takes me back to the prayer team, the three Hebrew boys, glory to God. And now they are being thrown in the fire because they are standing for what they believe. They refuse to break the circle. They refuse against what some man got to say, against some what some demon is doing. They said within themselves, we are going to sit right here and do the will of God against all odds. And the devil got mad when you make up your mind that you're going to do God's will no matter what. The devil will get upset, but don't worry, God's got you. What I love about God, the God that we serve, what I love about the God that we pray to, the God, the only living and wise God in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What I like about him, the king of all kings, the Lord of all lords, what I like about our Yeshua, the savior, the sovereign God, what I love about the one that we pray, that we're praying to, no other God, we're praying to him for 21 days, what I love about him, glory to God, he is real and he will show you that he's real, glory to God, those other spirits cannot prove to you that they are real, but what I love about our God, Glory to God. He loves showing you that he's in the middle of the situation with you. He loves to let you get in the center or the eye of the storm. He says, you're in the middle of prayer. I'm, I'm going to allow you to get in the middle of the test. Glory to God. So I can show you how powerful I am and how I will get in the center of the situation with you. If you notice, Jesus himself, glory to God, the Lord of Lords came down and revealed himself, glory to God, to the three Hebrew boys and to their enemies, Nebuchadnezzar, and the whole nation could see Jesus 
in the midst of the fire. They say it looks like there's a fourth man in there. Help me, Holy Ghost. There's another force in there that's causing a force field or to be around the three so that they're in the fire, but they're still, uh, glory to God, alive and they're not being consumed. Glory to God. Don't you know God will protect you in the midst of the fire? Don't you know God will cover you in the midst of the fire? Don't you know God will get in the middle of the test with you? He will not let you go through it by yourself. Uh, we serve a God that don't mind coming down from his glory seat. Glory to God. And coming down and allowing his spirit to get in the middle. Glory to God. That's why it's important to praise him in the middle of it. Woo, you got to get up and praise him. I know we're in prayer now, uh, but brothers and sisters, if you're just listening to me and you're not doing nothing, you are missing the moment. Uh, God is speaking clearly. He said, form the prayer circle. And even when the prayer circle is under fire, he said, I will get in the middle of the circle with you. Uh, I come to tell as many people that will get up and give him praise that's watching this, uh, that there is a miracle in the the middle there is a miracle in the center of it uh, and even though you're in the eye or the center of the storm uh, God told me to tell you that you're uh, that his presence is in the middle of it with you uh, you just got to learn to stop talking uh, and stop uh, allowing the enemy to get you off glory to God but you need to focus uh, and begin to give God praise in the middle uh, you got to give him glory in the middle uh, Jesus is all Always in the middle. He doesn't mind getting in the situation with you. He's the kind of king that won't let you go to battle by yourself. But he's the kind of king that will get up in the battlefield with you and come on and protect you and cover you. I thank God for there's a miracle in the middle. You just got to stop and recognize what's going on and who's there with you. If you look uh, with your spiritual eye, you will see that God uh, is covering you in the middle, that you are not in the situation by yourself. Uh, there's somebody watching me right now. You say, I'm in it alone. The devil is a lie. You are not in this test alone. You are not going through it alone. If you really praise him and begin to give God glory, God will reveal to you that he is in the middle. God likes to get in the middle. <laughs> Hallelujah. He got in the center of the fire with the three Hebrew boys, but he also allowed himself to be hung between two thieves in the middle of a mess. Uh, even though he's majestic and he's God and he has all power, he allowed himself to get in the center of the mess. Uh, glory to God to prove to us that no matter what the circumstance is, uh, it doesn't matter how ugly it is. Uh, it doesn't matter how tough it is. Uh, and I, I I sense that somebody is in an ugly situation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I got it now. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody that's watching now. Don't you move. Don't get fidgety. God is zooming in. There it is. There's somebody in the center of the mess. You're in the eye of the storm. Or you're in the center of of it. Glory to God. Uh, hallelujah. It's been going on for a few days, saith the Lord. Uh, glory to God. And now you will see that today is the middle of it. Glory to God. Uh, and the enemy planned to intensify his attack. Glory to God. God told me to tell you that it will not work and it has been diffused. Whatever the enemy was plotting to uh, double down on his wickedness. God is backing up your enemies. He's putting them in their place. You will see prophetically that today is the day where the warfare will, will cease. It's amazing how uh, when you get in the center of the warfare or the center of the test. Uh, at the center, I'm even thinking about tornadoes, right? 
Help me, Holy Ghost. Rabando lo kosoba mandele babando lo koba dahaya. Rosu rabamanda laba. Oh, shamana laba biondo saya. Thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, for a covering. Glory to God. I thank you for a covering for your people. That natural disasters that the enemy is planning will not destroy your people. Wherever there is a prayer circle formed, hallelujah, I thank you, Lord God, for the whatever it is, the tornado will have to go around. I thank you, Lord God, even if it's one house, glory to God, hallelujah, I thank you, Lord God, if it's one block where the saints are on the block praying, I thank you for it will jump over the block. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Glory. I thank you for everything will remain intact. I thank you, Lord God. We pray against, uh, glory to God, uh, natural disasters. We pray against earthquakes in different places, even though that your word already said it would happen. So we cannot pray against your word. I pray a covering over your people. Thank you, Lord God. Woo! I thank you for a divine covering, a circling around your chosen people. Thank you, Lord. I give you praise. Hallelujah. I got a right to pray for that. Glory to God. I thank you for divine protection around every household represented in this prayer. I thank you for the authority to pray by the Spirit what you say. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We don't have the ability to pray against your will, but we pray according to your will, divine protection. According to your will, God. Hallelujah. You say that no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper. I thank you, Lord God. Your word declares that though an host encamp round about us, hallelujah, you will cover us and keep us. I thank you, Lord God. Your word declares a thousand shall fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand. And glory to God, it shall not come nigh our dwelling. Let me read this. I want to make sure I'm praying on target today. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all know it, but I feel led to pray it by the Spirit while we're praying. Because God just revealed to me, glory to God, that there's some things that he will allow. But he said, that's why you have to form a prayer circle. It's almost like uh, God allowed the ten plagues to come. Uh, if you prayed against the twin plagues, it, you're, you are wasting your prayer. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, when God, because the 10 plagues were not meant for the children of Israel, it was meant for Pharaoh so he can break, so he can break his pride, so he can let the people go. So what the plagues that God was allowing to come forth was not meant for certain people, for his chosen people. Do you get it? So they had to do some things to make sure that they would not be a recipient of something that was not meant for them. <laughs> Glory to God. It, they had to make sure that they covered their homes with uh, the blood and they smeared the blood. They had to make sure, glory to God, that they did exactly what Moses told them to do so they could be covered. So I thank you, Lord God, but there's somebody here that's going to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. I thank you for divine covering over your people. Glory to God. I thank you for divine covering. Glory to God. Because it's not your will that your people would perish. But I also see, glory to God, according to God's will, glory to God, he that dwelleth in the secret place or dwelleth in the secret prayer circle or the presence of the Lord of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my 
fortress or my covering, right? He's my God and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler or from the noisome pestilence. That's uh, pestilence is a, a viral, uh, something, uh, a, a deadly disease, right? Pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thy eyes shall thou uh, the eyes shall thou behold. You'll be able to see the reward of the wicked. Glory to God. So what is coming is not meant for the righteous. It is meant for the wicked. He said, you're going to be able to see their reward because thou has made the Lord, which the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high your habitation. That's a deep word there. You've, in other words, it's saying because you have created a space for God to inhabit or a space for God to dwell in, he said, you're going to be covered. He said, there shall no evil befall thee. That's why I'm talking about the prayer circle. I've been on it. We're on target. Thank you, Holy Ghost. He said, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against the stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon, shall thou trample under your feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Now, I love this piece here. He said, I will set the ones on high who will not get amnesia. I will set the ones on high who remembers and know that knows my name, that they won't get in the test and forget everything that they have been trained to know by the spirit. It's amazing to me that once the pressure comes on, people start losing their cool. Glory to God. When you know God, he said those he said, I'm going to set those up on high who have the confidence in my name, those who know my name. Uh, when you know God, you have nothing to fear, nothing to worry about, no matter what is going on, because you know that God is going to take care of you. So it's important to uh, get the information, to collect the data, store up the data, that's why David said, thy word, O Lord, have I collected and hidden in my heart. I've stored it up for times of testing. Thy word, O Lord, have I placed in. I put in the archives. I put in the, out, the iCloud of my heart. I've saved it there so it can come up before me and remind me of who you are when the test is coming. I hope I'm teaching and praying and preaching at the same time. I hope somebody's getting it. He said, I'm going to set you up on high because you know that's important to know his name. Glory to God and the power that's in his name. That's why you should not play and say his name in vain because when you need it the most. That's when it will work for you. But if you play with it, glory to God. I remember when I was younger, uh, the mothers used to tell us we used to be around there playing, speaking in tongues, me and my friends. You know, church kids. Playing, shouting, and just playing, you know, doing church stuff. Playing games. <laughs> we doing what we doing. We kids, right? But, but the mothers, I'll never forget all the mothers. Mother Streety, Mother Houston, Mother Moore, Mother All. They'll come up to you, tap you on your shoulder and say, you stop playing. Stop playing with those tongues. It ain't nothing to play with because when you need those tongues to work for you, they won't work for you. <laughs> you over there playing with God, playing church, but 
There is power in the gifts that God has given you. There is power in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There is power in the Holy Ghost. There is power in praise. I know we, 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 you know, we play around and everybody done figured out how to do their steps. And, you know, you got it. You can turn it on and turn it off. But you don't want to play with that because there is power when you praise. There is power when you do it according to the spirit. Because when Joshua did it, the wall came down. Do you hear me? When David praised, the glory of God came to the camp. So you don't want to play with dancing. I know that's what everybody, that's the trend now. Everybody got their shout. That ain't nothing to play with. Everybody got playing with the tongues. It's a joke now on social media. You know, coming on a Honda and all this stuff. The tongues, the gift of tongues is real. It works when you don't play with it. So I remember them tapping me on my shoulder saying, Dietrich, you're playing too much. <laughs> and I'm telling you, when I got serious about it, I realized, oh, my God, what they were telling me is right. When I needed to feel God's presence the most. I remember when I was in the darkest time of my life, I was in the middle of the storm. Nobody would call me to encourage me. Everybody had something to say. Everybody was saying everything. Glory to God. I had nowhere to go. My mama couldn't help me. And she always got a word. She, <laughs> she always prophesying and can see everything. But my mama, Prophetess Joyce Haddon, couldn't help me. Nothing she could say could soothe what was going on. My father, now my father is a man's man. He knows what to do in any situation. I've been living a long time and never seen him without something or a solution. But there was a time in my life where God wouldn't allow him to give me the solution. Glory to God. There are times when God will let you go through it. Glory to God. So that you can activate your own faith. I'm, we on target today. <laughs> There are times when God will not allow you to draw from anybody else. <laughs> there are times even if your loved ones want to call you to encourage you, God won't even let the call go through. Because this is the moment in time where you have to mature in God. This is the testing for you to see the God that you serve, for you to have a testimony because somebody else's testimony can't help you when you're going through the storm. You got to have your own testimony. God's trying to give you your own uh, experience. He's trying to show you that when you speak in tongues in the fire, when you say his name in the fire, when you praise in the fire, it works. Glory to God is no meme for social media. It's real. Glory to God. And God says you're going to need it. You're going to need it. Those things that you play with now, you are going to need it in the future. Glory to God. And it will be there for you. Glory to God. If you do not look at it and play with it as a joke, the gifts of God is no joke. Glory to God. Take it seriously. Take the prayer circle seriously. Take the gifts of the spirit ser seriously. Take the praise that you got seriously because it will cause those are your spiritual weapons. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. We don't have guns and knives and all that stuff. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal or not natural, but they're mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds. So when you need these spiritual weapons to work for you. It's going to be there for you. If you reverence it and respect it now. God says I. When they, because you have known my name. He shall call upon me. He said because you know how serious it is. When you call upon me. According to Psalms 91 and 15. He said he shall call upon me. And I will answer him. God says when we go through whatever we're going through or whatever is already uh, 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 ordained by God to go through. He said, when you call on my name and don't play with it, he said, I will answer you. 
Watch this. He said, I will be with him in times of trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. This is the word for everybody that's watching now. If you heard, hadn't heard anything else, listen to what I'm telling you right here. Zoom in. Don't be distracted. He said, if, he said, I will deliver you. I will be with you in trouble. I will deliver that individual. I will honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him? It is a will of the Lord that God favors you and bless you with long life. It is the will of God that he gives you long life. Even when chaos is breaking out. I don't care when war is breaking out. I don't care what's going on. I'm telling you that God, because if you know him, if you honor him, if you call upon him, he will answer and he will deliver you and he will grant you or bless you with long life. He said, with long life will I satisfy him and show that individual my power. He said, I'll prove it to him that I'm no joke, that the God that they serve is real. He's no, no, he's, he's, he's no game, nothing to play with. He's not anything that somebody conjured up for the God that we serve is real and he will save you and deliver you in times of trouble. That's why it's important that you don't allow anybody to get you out of your prayer circle. Don't let the devil make you break your circle. That's what the enemy wants to do. To get you out of the circle. Now, if the devil, Satan, I'm talking about the devil. If Satan can try to tempt Jesus away from his circle. You will read it in Matthew when the devil took Jesus to try to tempt him to break his covenant with the Holy Ghost and the Father. He's in a circle. Jesus is in a circle. His circle is God the Father, the Holy Ghost, and he's the Son. He's in a circle. He's all locked in. He don't, li he don't listen. He don't need to join no other circle. There's nothing you can do to influence him away from that relationship. Even though I, in the flesh, I know who's with me. I know who's standing behind me. I know what I, who I'm working for. And I know the assignment. So I'm not budging. But the devil is crazy enough to try to tempt Jesus away from his circle. So if the devil is crazy enough to try to tempt Jesus out of his circle, what makes you think he won't try to get you to break the circle? I don't hear no amens. Y'all mighty quiet today. That devil trying to get you out of place. You know why he's trying to get you out of the godly circle that he's put you in, that God has put you in and get you on his circle, in his circle? Because there are some places that are, or some circles that are blessed. Hear me now, y'all not going to like this. And there's some circles that are cursed. There are some people that you should not be hanging with. You should not be there, even though I can do whatever I want to. You should not be in that circle. That is not your divine covering. That is not your prayer circle. There are certain circles that God has already passed judgment on that's going to happen this year. And that was deep. There is a judgment already released in the heaven, heavenlies, already stamped and approved for certain circles where people do not reverence God, don't respect him, have no fear. You don't want to be in that circle. Now, if you're hanging with Jesus, you're in a good circle. You're in the best circle. There is no greater circle. If you're hanging with Joshua, they're tearing down walls by praising God. That's a good circle. If you're hanging with Gideon, even though it's a few of them, just 300 men, they're winning wars against thousands. It's not a whole lot of them. It's a small circle. Gideon was just a small circle. If you're hanging out at Rhoda's house or Mary's house with Rhoda in them, they got a prayer circle going. They're opening prison doors from their prayers. <laughs> People that are incarcerated. Peter was locked and bound up. They were at home praying in the circle. God sent an angel to answer their prayers. So if you're hanging with them, that's a blessed circle. But if you're hanging with Miriam, Moses' sister, who kept trying to get a group that's contrary to what God wants, 
And that's a cursed circle. <laughs> it, she about to get leprosy and everybody connected to her will get leprosy too. That's the wrong circle. You in the you, and the devil trying to get you uproot you from where you're supposed to be to where you should not be. If you're hanging with the um, Absalom, you got to read these stories. Absalom, Absalom, David's son, Absalom. Everybody, him and everybody that's connected to him, they all going to die. <laughs> they gonna die. <laughs> you are in the wrong circle. The, Absalom tried to overthrow his father's kingdom. And so he got himself in a pickle. And he happened to win the hearts of individuals to follow him. And when it all came down, you know, God's anointed is going to win. When it all when it's all said and done, the ones that God has anointed will always win. So he tries to overthrow his father who was anointed since he was 12 years old. And got himself killed. And everybody, his army that he had formed. So what I'm saying, there are certain circles where judgment is already sent there. So you want to be where God wants you to be. And if you find somebody that's in your godly circle, that's uh, going against God, like a Jonah, a Jonah could mess up a good circle, prayer circle. <laughs> A Jonah could mess it up for everybody because you're running from God. So now the whole ship is tore up because you are out of place. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for clarity. I thank you for understanding. I thank you for precision. I thank you for uh, you are sharp today, hitting the target from the north, south, east and the west. I thank you. You have sent people to prayer today. I thank you for it, Lord God. You called us to pray for 21 days straight. We thank you for the 12th day of prayer. We thank you, Lord God. Today is a very significant day. On May the 12th, which happens to be the 12th day of our 21 days of prayer. So I thank you, Lord God, for we are synced up with heaven. God, we thank you for your will will be done in the earth realm as it is in heaven. I thank you, Lord God, for we are locked in. We are in sync with your will. We give you praise for it. So God, whatever you're going to do today, we thank you for it. We thank you for the miracle that's in the middle today. I give you praise for the miracle that's in the middle of this prayer. We're in the middle of the 21 days. Somebody's in the middle of the storm. Somebody's in the middle of the test and somebody's in the middle of their greatest miracle. I give you praise for it all because you have an expected end for all of us. I give you praise for it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen and amen. Glory to God. I didn't talk for an hour. I talked and talked and prayed for one hour. And I'm telling you, I feel refreshed. I could go a whole nother hour, but we only doing one hour prayers every morning. Meet me here. Uh, I wish we're praying over the weekend, but we will not be on, uh, on live. We will be online. Here's the number for you to join. People join us from everywhere. Last week, we had almost 200 people on the prayer call. Uh, the number is 857-357-0254. 857-357-0254. The access code to get into prayer for tomorrow morning is 755393. If you come looking for us to be live here on the weekend, it's not going to happen. We only do it from Monday through uh, Friday. So I'm here praying, leading the group uh, from Monday through Friday. Then we pray on the line on the weekend. Uh, I will be in the prayer, but I take that time to get replenished because I've given all I can give uh, during the weekend prayer. So it's my time to be poured back into and it allows me to prepare myself to preach on Sunday at Hill City Church. If you don't have a place of worship or don't have a church home, don't ever say it again. You can join Hill City Church. Uh, go to hillcitylife.com, hillcitylife.com, hit the join button, say, I want to be a part of what God is doing in Los Angeles, California with Pastor Dietrich and the Hill City Church family. 
Join us right now. Um, if you want to be a part of our worship on Mother's Day, come on to 305 West Torrance Boulevard uh, this Sunday for Mother's Day. We'll be glad to uh, welcome you and your mother. Bring your mother to church. We're going to be having a shouting Holy Ghost good time like we do every Sunday at Hill City Church. You should watch our services. The glory of God is there. And it's going to really be heavy uh, these days because we're in the middle of the prayer. So I, I find that when we're in the middle of our prayer, uh, the, the, the glory of God or the anointing of God intensifies. So uh, you can join us there. All right, before we close, I want to give you an opportunity to uh, sow a seed in the ground and make sure you get something with the number 12 to represent the number 12. Uh, today is God, the number 12 is God's, it represents God's perfect number. So get a seed with something 12 in it. Uh, do that now. Hill City Church INC. INC. I'm not telling you give a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars. I'm telling you to give something because I understand the principle of seed time and harvest. A lot of people want to get a word, but don't want to sow into the word. What I teach our church here at Hill City Church, when you know God spoke to you, spoke to your situation clearly, when you know that God's, you've had an experience with God in that moment, you have to put something down or something in the ground, sow a seed. Once you've done it, I'm not going anywhere. I want to see who sowed the seed. It reminds me of Jacob when he had an encounter with God. He's seen the, uh, he's seen, uh, uh, the ladder, Jacob's ladder. He's seen angels ascending and descending in that location. So he recognized like this is not, I've been in the presence of the Lord and this is not like any other place. Like there's something special about this and God spoke to me through this experience. When he woke up, he took a, he took a rock, he set it in that place, he poured some oil on that rock, and he said, this will be my Bethel. Bless you, Erica. Erica, say, I've sown. Once you have sown, let me know that you've sown so I can see who's really locked in with this. He said, this is my Bethel, or this is the place where I heard from God. This is the place where I experienced God. So I'm going to take some oil and I'm going to pour it here and I'm going to signify that this is the place where I experienced God. Then he vowed, he made a vow that I will give 10% a tithe from this point on as a result of my experience. And I'm not telling you to do that to my church. It's so, but you need to, you need to, when you are in the middle of a blessing, you need to find somewhere to sow. <laughs> Nobody should have to try to convince you, you need to be searching out somebody. Somebody called me yesterday, can't say any names, uh, a, a, a cash app hit, and I said, who's this sitting, sitting this money? Sent a thousand dollars. And I called the person, you meant to do this? They said, oh yes, I meant to do that. I gotta find somewhere to sow. She said, and they said, I know you're praying, you're seeking the Lord, and I need a miracle so God told me to sow $1,000 into your ministry. It happened yesterday. I'm not telling you that for you to sow $1,000. Do you hear me? I'm giving you a testimony. Someone sent that seed yesterday. And I had to call and make sure that it was real. I said, should I be sending you this back? <laughs> they said, no, God told me to sow it to you. I said, my goodness. Because... They are in the midst of needing a miracle, so they had to find somewhere to sow, and they recognized that I see you praying every morning. So if, if I know it's good ground <laughs> over there. <laughs> I've been in prayer with you every morning, and God's been speaking to me in that at that Bethel during that time with Hill City Church in that circle of seekers. So I'm sowing that seed. And I'm telling you, I'm believing God for their miracle. I'm expecting for that person to call me and screaming, saying what God has done. Amen. Because when you're sowing on good ground with good people, good ministry, doing something good, doing the best they can, God has to honor that seed. Lachel, I see you. I see you, Lachel. Bless you. Bless you, Vanessa. Bless you, Dorothy Hill. Who else is sowing? Come on, put it up there so I can see. Tanja, bless you. Bless you, Tanja. Uh, for sowing into Hill City Church. Tara, I see you. Bless you, Tara. My sister Tara, I see you. Bless you. Uh, Alexis, circle seed sown. Bless you. Bless you. Who else? Come on, y'all go faster. Go a little bit faster. Son Sonia uh, have sown the seed. 
Uh, I was excited to sow this morning. All right, Sylvia, sow your seed, bless you. Make sure you uh, call me today, Sylvia. We got work to do. We got things to do. It's a whole lot happening. We got a whole week of festivities. I got a party on Saturday for my birthday. My birthday is on Wednesday, May the 17th. And so John Edwards, he's sown, bless you. So May 17th. But the, the celebration is on Saturday the 20th. So that's when we could get the facility. And so, and then Sunday is Choir Fest. Uh, Bishop Hezekiah Walker is, is throwing a Choir Fest in my honor. So all the best choirs in the city will be at Emmanuel Temple, Greater Emmanuel Temple in Linwood, California. We're going to have a time. How do I sow? Hill City Church INC on Cash App if you're doing a Cash App. So there's a week of stuff. So I need you, Sylvia, and the rest of the team to make sure you lift the load off your pastor. Do the things that I can't do. I need help. We need help. Lift the load off your first lady and your pastor, all right? Because everybody's flying in. I got friends, uh, a lot of people flying in. Some of my friends that I've had friends for years, went to high school with. My high school friends are coming and some of my everybody's coming in. And so I need some help to make sure everybody's squared away. Everybody's settled. You know, I'm a, I'm a good host. I believe in making sure everybody's fine. Glory to God. So, because uh, they're coming to celebrate with me, and I want them to be excited to do that, right? And so, I need Sylvia said, I got you. I got you. Who else? Somebody else got to help us. Uh, where's where's uh, the team? Where's the team? Y'all on here, all my Hill City people. Y'all on here. <laughs> bless you. I need your help. I need your help. Uh, Annette said, happy birthday. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, I'm, you're looking at a 50-year-old. It is what it is. And I'm excited about growing older in God. Uh, and so uh, I thank God for long life. Now, y'all going to have to deal with me uh, for another 54 years. You're going to have to have Dietrich Hatton in your life. He will be there for the next 54 years. <laughs> You got to deal with my music. You got to deal with my praying. You got to deal with my preaching. You got to deal with me being me for another 54 years and beyond that because we got little Dietrich already singing and dancing. He thinks he's Michael Jackson around here. Every time I turn around, he's talking about, da, 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 I, and the, da, da, um, da. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> just, I said, how in the world? That's powerful how music can uh, span through generations. And Michael Jackson he ain't even here anymore, but he's impacted by Michael Jackson like Michael Jackson is still alive. And that's telling you the power of music, the power of influence also. So you got Lil Dietrich here, then you got Denver and all the Denver singing and Destin is singing. They all sang, so you got to deal with them. <laughs> when I hang up my boots, you got that crew coming. Then their children's children. So you're going to have to deal with us. But I'm telling you, I got another 54 years because that's when I'm going to check out. I decided at 104 years old is when I'm going to go ahead and say, God bless you. I've done all I could do, said all I could say. I'm going to be around for 104 years. I prophesied. I speak over my own life. I don't need no prophet telling me nothing. <laughs> I speak it over me. I look myself in the mirror and say, I tell my body, my mind, we will be around for another 54. Glory to God. In the name of Jesus. You know you can do that, don't you? Now y'all looking at me like, now he done went off now. No, you can do that. You can declare it. You can ask God to give it to you. To add years to your life. You can ask it. It reminds me of uh, Simon in the Bible. He said, I, the Holy Ghost revealed to him that he will not see death until he hold the baby Jesus in his arms. And so even if he wanted to die, he couldn't because he had already prophesied over his own life. He said, I will not see death until I fulfill my purpose. He said, I got to hold that baby in my hands literally before I check up out of the earth realm. Right. So he lived. And once he held Jesus and prophesied over Jesus. That's when he said, I, I'm ready to go now. <laughs> he said, I'm done. All my friends done gone. I'm the last of the Mohegans. I'm the last one here. He said, I'm ready to go now. You have fulfilled your word. I prophesied it came to pass. Now I'm ready to go and let them have it. 
Glory to God. So yes, I got another 54 to deal with it. Y'all got to deal with it. Amen. 54 more years, I'll have your back, your family's back, praying, believing God, singing, uh, doing all that I could do uh, until my time comes. So I'm excited uh, about life. I'm excited uh, when you and, and when you're 50 years old in the musical industry, music industry years, you're, you're old. <laughs> OK, in the music industry. That means that I've been there and I've done that. I've done what most young people in the gospel industry are doing. I've, I've done it already. Right. I started professionally when I was 16 years old. And so some 30 records later and counting. Uh, uh, we're still here by the grace of God doing what he's called us to do. All right. Thank you guys for being in prayer with us today. Today was deep. I mean, all week, the entire week, I want to motivate you guys to watch all week. You should go back to a Monday. Start on Monday. Just let it play because there's some deep things uh, that God spoke. I'm going to listen back. Uh, when it's all said and done, I like to wait and listen back to everything. Uh, but there's because there's some significant prophetic things that God has said during this week. This week was deep. So uh, go ahead and, and watch it. Uh, it will bless your life. I love you guys with all my heart, mind, body and soul. God bless you. May God prosper your endeavors and send you on your way rejoicing. God bless you. I love y'all. Peace.